What I began realizing as I, as I began nurturing this relationship with the Lord is that God really had called me to worship. That from the beginning of time that God has planned for you and for me to be worshipers and that He sent His Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross not just to give us eternal life, that's wonderful that He's given us eternal life, but He did it so that we would become worshipers. He created us from the beginning of time so that we would worship Him and when we, we fell, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden, that relationship of worship that He enjoyed and we enjoyed with Him was, was so destroyed and so uh, mismanaged, if you want to use that word, that since that time God planned and has been planning for us to, to restore that relationship of worship. So when Jesus Christ came and He gave Himself for our sins, took on us, his, uh, on Himself, our sins and the, the penalty of our sins, what He did was open the door for us to really worship Him in spirit and in truth and in freedom. And um, that, when I came to that realization, it was probably the winter of 1994 that I came to the realization, whoa, God's really called me, not my mother, not my dad, but me to be a worshiper and to devote myself to worshiping Him. It totally changed my life and it changed the way I taught in classes. It, taught, it changed the way I preached. It changed the way that I communicated with my family. It just totally changed me. Years ago, I remember hearing Scotty Smith from uh, Christ Community Church down in Franklin give a sermon on how we needed to practice lifestyle worship. Well, I thought I understood that. Well, I did understand that cognitively. But when the Lord really kind of brought me to a place where I understood that worship was everything we are, I understood then for the first time what lifestyle worship was all about.